So thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Joey Fight. I am the founder of the PhysicalEducator.com and I am a phys ed teacher here in Montreal, Canada at St. George's School of Montreal where I teach grades 1, 2, 3, and 6 and I absolutely love my job. This is the Scope Vlog, which is a vlog where I, I do some daily reflections on my teaching, I share some ideas, I catch you up on some research I'm looking into, all those types of things. Each day of the week has a different kind of theme. Hang out to the end of the video if you're watching this on YouTube and you'll get to see all of those themes. On Fridays, I reflect on my week. So I'm about to show you everything that I did this week. Um, I'm gonna try and keep it under 10 minutes here. So here we go. Um, first of all, let's go week by or grade by grade here. So with grade ones this week, um, I'm really pumped because as I mentioned on Monday when I was setting out my intentions for the week, I'm way ahead of schedule in my in my uh, outcomes with my students. Uh, we had a really successful year. My grade one class is a great group of students. We were able to achieve a lot. We were able to review a lot. So over the next couple of weeks, aside from uh, striking and volleying, uh, we, we've really covered all the outcomes. Oh, and teaching personal social responsibility outcomes, so that standard four stuff. Um, we've really covered most of the outcomes uh, for this year. Now I'm going to be spending the rest of the school year kind of going over certain things, spending extra time on things that I feel like students had a harder time with, and also trying to move them forward into some of the grade two outcomes so that they're prepared and they're ready for next year. Grade one this, this week I taught them twice. The first time we did a lot of station work. I was trying to catch up on some assessment. I, we were working on um, rolling in while maintaining different body shapes, weight transfers, that kind of stuff. So I was catching up, getting some video on that. And by the way, when I'm taking video of the students, I'm uploading it directly into their Google Drive portfolio. Somebody was asking me about that on Twitter yesterday. So that's kind of how I'm doing it. I'm recording right into that app. Um, so grade one, that was great. My second grade one class this week, we were working on kicking. Kicking is something that we didn't spend a lot of time on uh, earlier in the year because I thought that what most of my students were showing most of the critical elements for the skill anyways. But I wanted to go back uh, and we worked on a little bit more. Um, we played an awesome game called Bombs Away where the kids are kind of, it's kind of relay style, they're dividing into small teams, really small teams, two kid per team, and um, each team has a ball, and what you're doing, there's a whole like minefield of bowling pins and foamies, and you are you have your ball on a beanbag, and you're running up, you're trying to kick a stationary ball, um, but trying to knock down a pin, if you knock down a pin, you get to go take it and bring it back. We're using these foam dodge balls, these gator skin balls, because uh, I don't want anybody getting hit with a harder ball. Um, but and for kicking, it was perfect. It worked out great. Again, my grade one class is a really great group of students. All my students are great. I'm saying this because I had a great day today. Um, but all my students are really great, and we were able to achieve a lot. So that was my grade one class. Grade two this week, we were working on foot skills. And I'm not going to lie, I was straight up using Open's foot skills unit, uh, learning module, which you can find on openphysed.org. Um, Aaron and the team there did a great job putting some activities together. We played bean by grab. Uh, we played uh, what was the other game we played? We played another game uh, the other day. It's I can't remember right now. Uh, but the kids were fired up. My grade two class loves 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 playing soccer. So the fact that we were working on foot skills and we're talking about how this is going to help us improve our soccer skills and also help us improve our eye foot coordination and all that stuff. Uh, they were really keen. Um, for foot uh, skills in terms of dribbling, uh, we're working on moving around in, in, general, in general space, sharing space with others, uh, and the kids have done a great job with that, playing red light, green light today, um, and then also working on our kicking, uh, with our kicking we were also playing bombs away with them, um, they got really into it, uh, except the only big difference with them, 75 minutes are my, my periods, I see them twice a week for 75 minutes. The only big difference with grade two is that they're trying to kick a ball that is in motion. So instead of having the ball on a beanbag, they had to push the ball forward to foot. And as it was rolling, roll up, try and kick the ball and try and knock down one of these pins. Um, it went really well. I was really happy with everything we were able to do this week. And on top of that, I was really keen that I was really pumped that um, I got a lot of video of the students. I'm doing a really good job in terms of assessing them. My numbers, grade books are up to date. Um, and their portfolios are being filled up as well. So I got a lot of evidence to support what uh, I'm seeing in my assessment and also to share with parents, let them know how their kids are doing, which parents absolutely love. So that was grade two. Grade three, actually, no, I'm gonna jump right to grade six because grade three was like the superstar of the week here, but I'm gonna jump right into grade six. Grade six, we're in our second net and wall game unit for the, the year. We started off our first net and wall games unit this year. We looked at pickleball, we looked at bat, no, sorry. We use pickleball, we use badminton to reach certain outcomes, especially uh, surrounding the forehand, backhand strokes. Um, as well as the overhand smash, 
And defensive and offensive tactics, defensive tactics of reducing space by returning to a midcourt position, offensive tactics by trying to create space by getting the opponent to move around. So we've seen those kind of skills, those tactics in net and wall games so far this year. Now we're moving more into volleyball where we're working on uh, underhand serving, we're working on two-hand volleying, um, and I'm pushing them a little bit further too because I want them to be a little bit more advanced going into grade seven. Uh, so we're also working on, on forearm passes, overhand passes, uh, and all that stuff. Um, to be honest, when I talking about lessons that didn't go so well, my first lesson in grade six this week did not go as planned. Um, I was really hoping that I was going to have um, my, oops, that's loud. I was really hoping that I was going to have coach's eye set up uh, and the kids were going to be able to do self-assessment using coach's eye. Uh, it didn't work out. I wasn't able to access the iPads and it was just a bit of a, a headache with the lesson. Um, we did see see some skills up on the TV, which the kids really appreciated, and we did get into some mini volleyball. Now, when I said my lesson kind of crashed and burned, one of the big issues that I had was the fact that I didn't do a great job um, building up mini volleyball. Uh, I kind of set the kids out into it, explained the game, um, and sent them out and said, okay, here's what I'm looking for. I want to see that you're using a, the forearm press at least in one of the three contacts you have on the ball. And the kids, they're having a hard time. Even with their underhand serves, they're having a difficult time. Um, so it, that wasn't a, it wasn't as successful as, as I had planned. But I learned between those two periods because I taught my first grade six class, then I went to the second grade six class. I switched things up. I hadn't played mini volleyball, just catch and toss all three contacts to start off. And the reason is I want them to get used to the court positioning. I want them to get used to the actual catch and toss, what makes for a good catch and toss in, in mini volleyball. Um, and I wanted them to get used to uh, the idea of like, where do you want to be sending the ball? What kind of what kind of pass should you be using? And then gradually we start taking away some of those catch and tosses and replace them with forearm passes. Um, we were playing with badminton nets, so we weren't attacking or anything. Just constantly trying to maintain a rally with the other team, get the ball over, make sure you're using those three contacts each and every time. Um, the le the second lesson went a lot better. I'm really happy because a lot of the kids, for whatever reason, they weren't really um, keen on volleyball. They, they, when I told them they were doing net and wall, and we're going to be seeing other games too in this unit, we're going to be working on some chook ball and some spike ball. Um, but when we talked about it, they weren't very keen. And I'm not sure why. I know that they've done mini volleyball in the past. And it was interesting to see that when they started getting those rallies going, all of a sudden they started gaining their confidence and started getting a lot more interested in the game. Um, so that was that was pretty cool to see and then today I had them up at the high school Which is great because the high school is a nice big gym We can actually play the game without worrying about the ball bouncing off the ceiling. The only thing is that some of the basketball nets um, The some, some of the basketball nets uh, We couldn't go up so they were in the wave of the badminton courts So instead of using mini volleyball on the badminton courts, I just simply had um, students playing on actual volleyball courts uh, and I wasn't sure how that was going to go. I preferred the smaller sided four and four kind of mini volleyball. I had them playing six on six, um, just with a few modifications in terms of where they were allowed to serve from and the types of contacts they were using. Uh, but it worked really great. The kids got really into it. And to be honest, it was nice just kind of letting them play it out and get a good feel for the game. And I had a lot of time. I was pulling students aside. I was assessing their, their skills. I got good video of the kids. I got my numbers grade books all up to date. Um, and a lot of like good happened in the class and there's a lot of like on uh, task behaviors which I was really really pumped about because I teach grade 6 Friday last period at the high school it's kind of always a bit of a crazy period um, but they were fantastic today so I was, I was really happy to see uh, that we made progress in that and that the kids are getting a lot more interested in the game um, which is uh, kind of pushing them to be more focused on uh, their actual um, skill development Ooh, I do want to say uh, I used again the magnet, the magnet rubrics I talked about in yesterday's vlog. If you check out the end of this video, you'll see a link to that, that vlog. Uh, with my grade twos this morning, in terms of selecting the critical elements you're focusing on with your dribbling with feet or kicking, and it worked fantastic. I'm so pumped about how those magnets are working out um, and how it's helping kids stay really focused. The conversations we were having at the end of the class in terms of, okay, what, how did you improve today? Students were saying, using the, 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 the terms and using the language. I even had one kid say that at the end of class, sometimes I'll have kids um, like, give yourself a pat on the back if you know that you, you, that you worked hard today and that you made good progress. And so, okay, let's give other people pats on the back. Give me a compliment. This is something about my teaching partner, Alex, taught me kids giving other kids compliments in class. Uh, and it's great. 
<laughs> one kid actually said, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. One kid actually said, I'd like to give a compliment to so-and-so because I saw her really working hard on all five critical elements of, or all, he didn't say critical elements, he said all five important parts of kicking and I could really tell that she was actively engaged. That was amazing because we talked about active engagement <laughs> last, last week when we were working with the pedometers. Um, so it was really fantastic to see that they were, they were thinking like that and the conversation was just really good. I was super pumped up about that. Anyways, so that was my grade one, two, and six. Here's what happened with grade three this week. First of all, we're working on benefits of physical activity. We're talking about engagement, physical activity. We're talking about the long term um, or how being active is part of being healthy. Um, but we also had something really special going on this week and I kind of teased it earlier on this week. We paired up with a school called Meadowbrook School, which is in the Boston area, and there are two fantastic phys ed teachers there, Allison and Matt, along with their amazing IT specialist, Sue. Now, what they're doing at their school is their grade four students are in getting engaged in a game design unit where they have to design these games. However, they want to try and see if they can get an international connection. So they reached out. I said, yeah, I'm super keen. And we, sent, we set up a Google Hangout time where we had three different contact points. We tried three because we weren't sure the network was going to be able to support more. It would have totally supported more. Next time, we're going to do smaller groups. Um, and their grade four students interviewed my grade three students and asked them questions about what they like in games, what kind of games they like, what, what makes a game fun, those types of questions. My grade three students gave them feedback. Their grade four students are going to go out. They're going to use the feedback. They're going to design games. They're going to send those games back to us. We're going to try them out. And then we're going to have another Google Hangout where the grade three students at my school give feedback on the games of the grade four students at Meadowbrook at design. Um, I'm just super, like, super pumped up that uh, we get to be a part of this. This is all the team at Meadowbrook putting this together. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And I'm just really fired up that we were able to get that done this week. So that was one of the cool things that happened in grade three. The other cool thing is the first time that we busted out the pedometers. So we have, I have this big set of pedometers that we've had for a while now, um, and I'm really starting to use them a lot more. And it's insane thinking that I told the kids we we're going to go running. We we're going to go cross country running. We talked about why running outside is nice and why it's enjoyable and all those things. I slapped a pedometer on each kid using those clickers cards. They're all numbered. All my pedometers are numbered. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the pedometers in a, in a future vlog. Um, so the kids had the pedometers and they were fired up that they were getting to use these things. And my grade three students then went on to run for 45 minutes nonstop. Um, their goal, I gave them this impossible goal of trying to get 5,000 steps in our period. And like I said earlier, our periods are 75 minutes. But by the time that we got the pedometers on and everything, we were only really out there for like like 15 minutes, I guess. And they just ran. They enjoyed it. They were talking. It was so great. I was running with them and I was stopping and I was talking to them as we were going through. We were talking about how is running part of healthy? Is running something that you like? Um, what are some of the benefits of running? And we we're talking about that. And then at the end, we had this awesome conversation. This happened with both classes. We had this awesome conversation about what happened there when you were running? Well, we kind of started pairing up. And so what happened when you were paired up? Well, we were talking to each other and said, did you enjoy those conversations? Like, yeah, it was really nice. And I said, did anybody feel like they were really a lot more motivated because their partner was there running with them? And these aren't partners that I assigned. These are partners that just kind of organically happened in the lesson. And I was like, yeah, like I felt like I couldn't give up because so-and-so was running alongside me. And then we just talked about that enjoying that social interaction with others through physical activity. We talked about how being active can be a great way to maintain good relationships and to hang out with friends and just have a good time with other people. And that was one of the outcomes we're, we're, um, we've been focused on in this, in this unit. I mean, I have the kids reflect more on that, but to be honest, I was just super pumped up that they got to experience that. Now, today and yesterday, the grade three class, um, what we did is we went geocaching. Now, I teach in Montreal, Canada, which is one of our major cities here in, in Canada. It's a pretty big city. I think we got like 1.8 million people. It's a pretty big city, pretty dense, lots of stuff going on. Um, so today, I took my kids, and yet I'll, I'll tell you about yesterday's. Yesterday, I took my kids geocaching. Now, I use the geocaching app, which I don't, oh, I'm trying to find my phone. My phone's filming this thing right now. <laughs> Um, I used the geocaching app and I just opened up the app. I showed the kids how the app works. And of, of course, because we're in the city, there's like a whole cluster of geocaches in our areas. Now I know because I've gone geocaching with grade sixes before that um, some of the caches are mystery caches where you go and you have to try and find the coordinates for the next one. It's like a hint and then you go forward. I was looking for some classic caches, straight up, find the cache, box, log, that's it, let's go. 
Um, so we went to go find one that was near Westmount Park, uh, which is 1.3 kilometers, or sorry, that one's 1.2 kilometers away. Downhill, my, my school's kind of like, imagine like flat ground, and there's a big hill, and then my school's there, and then the hill continues, and you're on Mount Royal, which is our, the mountain in the middle of the island here in Montreal. So we walked all the way down that hill, we tried to find these caches, they were extra small, we never managed to find them, which was heartbreaking, and I really wish that I had gone to check them out. I looked up on the site, people said that they found them recently, that they were a little tricky to get to. Um, but you know, that was a teachable moment too. We talked to the kids about the fact that we didn't find the cache, but we're outside all together, enjoying the sun, enjoying the, the, the nice weather. And there was a lot of value to just that, to just getting outside and enjoying the outdoors. Uh, so that was yesterday's geocaching lesson. Today's though was fantastic. The kids were so fired up about geocaching because they heard the other group had gone and they heard that the other group hadn't found caches and they might find caches because we're going to a different place. Today I walked them up to the mountain, which was 1.3 kilometers away. And we uh, found, we went looking for a cache and we found this awesome cache. I already knew what it was because I'd found it with my grade sixes class, my grade six class earlier this year, but I didn't tell the kids that. And they found this cache and they were like, first of all, they're picking up like empty bottles and garbage and stuff. It's like, this cache, this cache. I was like, no, when you see it, you will know what it is. And finally, um, they found it and it was this like camouflage, like Tupperware thing. And inside were all kinds of tokens and the logbook and the logbook had been there, had been filled up since 2012 and they just thought that was amazing. And we had this amazing conversation about, okay, if you're going geocaching, you're going to do some kind of adventure activity, what do you need to do before you go? And we talked about preparing. What do you want to bring? Who do you want to inform? What do you have to look up? What do you have to pack? All those things. Had these awesome conversations about that. Talked about um, uh, the benefits of like geocaching, like being outdoors, enjoying nature, getting to see the city and from a different perspective because you're looking for treasure everywhere. Today I had the kids wear pedometers. Yesterday I forgot to put the pedometers on the kids because I was so excited about taking them geocaching. Today they had the pedometers and we got over 6,000 steps in a 75 minute block. Um, and the kids were just super pumped up. We walked all the way up to the mountain. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. Walked back down to the school. They were going to the cafeteria and telling everybody. They were telling their teachers and everything because they're so pumped up. They're like, we're going to get the geocaching app. We're going to go geocaching this weekend. And for me, that was just a massive win as a teacher. Um, so that was, that was great. That was the highlight of my day was my geocaching uh, lesson. Some things uh, from this week that um, I want to learn from. I really want to learn that or I want to I work harder on making sure that uh, I have assessment tools prepped and ready before uh, every lesson that they're ready to go. I want to make sure uh, that I keep doing a good job with, I think I've got the pedometer, the magnet system down well, but being even more efficient with that magnet system and trying to figure out how it can be easier to identify who's is who. Um, and I want to work harder on seeing how I can utilize the space in my school to get more of the grade sixes involved in, in these net wall games that we're doing. But in smaller groups, they're still going to prevent, uh, provide them with authentic game situations, um, but situations in which every child is really involved and engaged in and, be, and that has opportunity to reflect on their performance. Uh, so that was kind of my, my learning for the week. But really, this was a great week. It felt like it was a three-day week and it was a five-day week. Yesterday was a three, last week was a two-day week or a three-day week and it felt like a 12-day week. Anyways, that was my reflection for this week. Um, if you have any questions about any of the activities I talked about, feel free to drop some comments either on Twitter or if you're watching this on YouTube, drop comments on the co in the comments down below. And, and check out the, the description box below too. I'm going to put a bunch of links to everything I talked about today. Uh, but right now, I've got a bottle of wine, I've got a glass, I've got about 90 minutes of video editing to do, my wife is on her way home, and then i got to pack because tomorrow I am going to Toronto to see my main man Andy Vasily who's here from China and then uh, going back to China so I'm going to take advantage to see him here. Wherever you're from, I hope you had a fantastic week, I hope, you, I hope your teaching was amazing um, and I'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend everybody, thanks so much. Oh, 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 oh,